Hi guys, welcome. Today we are taking a look at Black and White, the video game. Released in the year 2001 and made by Lionhead Studios and this guy. To be a digital god. The one and only Peter Molyneux, a man with a brilliant mind, fascinating understanding of video game design and a man of his word that combined elements of artificial life and strategy to bring us the highly anticipated game of its year, Black and White. From the darkest, deepest black to the whitest, white, uh, brightest white. Let me take you back in time not so long after the game's initial release. It was a dark and stormy night. Father came home late again, but he brought a present for his son. In his naivety he found a video game that supposedly should help you find out who you really are. A world where you can dive in and play as a god. Raise your very own creature and learn the differences between good and evil. Must be a Christian game that will educate and teach my son about religion, ethics and maybe philosophy. What's morally good and bad and are morally right and wrong. Black and white. A game that definitely won't have any detrimental effects on a young and innocent mind. Together, as fathers and sons traditionally do, they took their first steps into this unknown world to see what it holds. Now let's learn how to look up and down. Movement yes. and interaction with the environment happens graciously through an animated on-screen hand controlled by your very own mouse. With this hand you are capable to do all sorts of different actions in this world. Pick up people, resources, objects, tap houses to wake their occupants, cast miracles or do other kinds of various actions. By your actions and interventions or the lack of it, you may be seen as a good god, an evil one or as one in between the two, with the atmosphere changing depending on your moral choices. My brother suffering a fever has left his sick bed and become lost. <laughs> The sick dude's dead. Let's show the body to his sister. <laughs> but don't worry, two advisors, one good, the other evil, will help and explain to you which action will have what consequences by trying to persuade you in doing things according to their alignment. Don't do it! No, no, don't do it! After witnessing the apparent innocence of this game, father set off, leaving behind a curious and very happy little boy with a big smile on his oh, face and a newly obtained creature. A creature that would change his life. The goal of Black and White is simple. Travel from one land to the next one while growing your followership, completing diverse and interesting quests on your way, caring and training your creature to ultimately being able to beat all the other gods. To in the end come out as the only one and only true god in this world. A task so big and incomprehensible for a boy at this age. But despite his limited perception of things, he had a blast. And deep down in his heart he knew, doing bad things in this world, even though it's virtual, was somehow morally wrong. He felt remorse for those pixelated fellows and developed a deep connection to his creature. A creature with a Tamagotchi-like system that eats, sleeps, shits, grows and learns from your action. Actions that could be good-natured, productive and meaningful, or bad-natured and outright sadistic, a direct reflection of yourself. There are multiple paths you can choose to progress in black and white. To beat the other gods, you gotta have to either impress and win over their followings and believe by casting all kinds of cheerful and good-natured miracles. Or you can just simply wipe them all out of existence by destroying their villages and taking their lives. To make clear what happened next, let me tell you what the story in black and white is all about. You are a god born by the prayers of a distressed family which left their child unsupervised for about a second. Coming into this world and rescuing that little shit, from here you will notice your arrival was expected. People already chanting around the stone and even building a temple in your name. After getting familiar with the village and acquiring your very own personal creature, you will be greeted by an even bigger creature. 
who tells of its former master, a god named Nemesis, who desires to reign supreme as the one true god by destroying all others. To prevent Nemesis from doing so, the player must destroy all gods before he does. The player is told the secret of the creed, an energy source with the ability to destroy gods. Upon hearing the creature's traitorous behavior, Nemesis destroys his former creature and attacks the village. Luckily, a mysterious vortex appears which the player can enter to escape Nemesis. After being transported to a second island by another god, Kazar, Kazar reveals that it was he who sent the vortex and requests assistance against another god. Beating the so said god leads to your allied god Kazar being completely annihilated from the Bible, provided you didn't do it yourself beforehand and your creature captured and damned for endless torture on the next island. This level was the shit and without the help of your creature extremely hard to master. That's roughly the premise of the story. One day that boy, no, <laughs> that god had enough. After struggling on the same S level for days now, maybe weeks and feeling desperate and helpless, witnessing his creature getting endlessly tortured by another god. He used the influence of a Norse-looking invincible man Come on, I can take anything you throw at me. by tossing him across the whole map into the enemy's controlled villages. Normally, you as a god can only act and cast miracles in a limited area of influence, depending on how much your people believe in you. But if the invincible man is tossed out of the player's area of influence, he will create a temporary, virtual area of influence wherever he lands, allowing the player to cast miracles within it. And that is what the boy did. After tossing that poor fella into enemy territory, he started blasting those lightning bolts. And not only the people, no, not only the immortal man or the cattle on the fields, but also the children of the village would start screaming in pain and agony atop of their lungs. It was so loud, the speakers were blasting those screams through the whole apartment, alerting father to inspect what the hell is going on in that boy's room. The boy wasn't fast enough, he couldn't turn down those speakers in time. And father saw what he did. The damage was done. He saw a kid playing as a god, torturing innocent children with freaking lightning bolts coming out of his fingers. Yes, that kid was me. He took that game away from me and I was devastated. The controversy at the time about video games leading to violent behavior in kids and teens being all over the news did not really help in the situation. These games teach a child to enjoy inflicting Torture. Thinking back, my father must have thought I was some sort of psychopath finding a way of torturing people in a Christian game, a god game simulator. He said I should go outside and go play with the neighbor's kid. Oh no, it's those crazy missionaries again. The same kid that showed me his pet hamster once and a funny trick he could do with it. With his eyes unnaturally bulging and nearly popping out of his skull if you just squeeze him hard enough. And here they thought I was the insane one. Black and white left me with a physiological trauma and a deep scar on my mental mind. I even dreamt and thought about my creature I loved and built a bond to, getting tortured on that island for eternity with sorrow even months later. And with me left, getting that game taken away from me, being able to do absolutely nothing about it. Imagine. Only way much more later I was able to revisit black and white and beat the game for good. I played through it a couple of times now and I must say it's a must play for everyone. It's a game unlike anything other out there and has a very special place in my heart. Only thing negative about it is its accessibility. Unless you have a copy of that game on disc you can't buy or play the game in at least a legal manner. Please, GOG, EA, I beg you, make this game accessible for the masses. It's the goddamn fourth most wished game on the community wishlist on GOG.com ever. 
at the time of the making of this video. It needs to be done. And for all of you parents or future potential parents out there, don't get your kids something as small and living and breathing as a hamster to play with. I know what kids are capable of doing when they get bored. I've seen it with my own eyes. Rather give them a good ass copy of black and white to play with. If it should ever get its digital release, I'm giving this game a solid 9 out of 10. A timeless masterpiece. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, many big thanks to all the Patreons supporting this channel with their sweat and blood. Love you all and I hope I see you in the next video. Until then, have a good one. Goodbye.